my name is Blake Dornay. I'm from Intel. Um, I'm from Intel's uh, data center software division. I work in product management and uh, APIs have been near and dear to me for a long time. Um, and what I wanted to do today is talk a little bit more about some of the enterprise requirements around API management. So this is one of the themes that I've been playing with. Um, the picture sort of says it all in one shot here, right? Mommy, where do APIs come from, right? Because as developers, you're out there and you just get to use them. It's value provided to you. You can sign up, register for an API, get an API key, and start hacking. So many of you in this room are probably more like this guy up top, right? Rocking with some great app uh, delivering value. And from that perspective, you're missing, you might be missing what's going on in the back end, right? Especially if you talk about a large enterprise. So from the perspective of the developer that gets to use the API, it, it looks great. And to that person, maybe it feels like a stork flew in and dropped the API, all ready to go, JSON responses, you know, it's uh, restful, it uh, scales, it's just really nice and packaged for me, right? And uh, they told me not to put this on the slide, but as in real life, the reality of this is much messier. So I kind of put the reality is actually messier than, than this. If you think about how the actual API comes to life and gets published and, and actually scales. So uh, I put a slide here around some of the business drivers. We just had a whole 30 minute talk on business drivers. Um, so I'm going to repeat some of these. Uh, why does an enterprise need an API? These are some of the larger themes. We'll go through them just quickly. So there's prevailing wisdom out there. W one of the, my favorites is it's table stakes. This is the, what I call the John Musser argument, right? Uh, of course I have a website. I'm a business, right? Of course I have an API. I'm a business. And I think that that's one of the arguments that's out there. Uh, and one of the analogies here is, you know, my father-in-law, he's a CPA and 99.9% .9 of his business comes through word of mouth, but he's got a website, right? He doesn't really do much with it. So there's, there's that argument. Uh, the second argument is more along the lines of what you just heard, which is the enterprise as a platform. And when an enterprise has technology they want to put out, they have to decide the degree of modularity they want to offer. Probably works better, huh? So the, the degree of modularity of their technology, whether they're going to have a fully vertical integrated technology stack, like the first Nintendo, which has no interfaces. The first Nintendo's only interface is AC power, right? Uh, if you begin to take that product and, and build interfaces, then you can build um, uh, a, a platform. Then you've got other arguments here, the wisdom of the crowd. You know, maybe you're a large company or a telco and you're not quite sure where your industry is going. And so rather than you figure it out, let's let somebody else figure it out. That's that argument there. And then of course there's uh, revenue channels, pay by the drink, indirect affiliate models, and then dot, dot, dot. It just goes on and on and on. And I think this area is interesting because there's a lot of very interesting business models that are being innovated all the time around this. So the question is, if this is true and all these arguments fly and APIs are great, and why doesn't every enterprise have an API now? Uh, you know, this is an emerging uh, a marketplace. This is, you know, we've got all these great companies who do API management. Every, every enterprise should have an API, right? So uh, as much as I love our, our space, it's not a billion dollar market yet, right? So, uh, let's see, I kind of, Got a little bit out of order here, but uh, this slide here, we'll, we'll get to some of the barriers. So this slide kind of shows the three types or categories of APIs that an enterprise is going to be dealing with. On the far right, they've got the wild cards. This is a long tail uh, public API development. And in the middle, you've got what we call powerful partnerships. Um, these are business arrangements, B2B uh, interactions between large enterprises. And then on the left-hand side, you have internal APIs, which aren't yet exposed. They still might be using some of the older technology sets around service-oriented architecture, uh, and they don't have the, the agility yet of the new RESTful approaches. So this is the spectrum of APIs that an enterprise is going to be dealing with. And as a large enterprise who's you know, traded on the stock market, they have to worry about financials, they have to worry about revenue and providing value to their customers. And so for them, 
This is more like, well, if I have APIs internally, I can increase my operational efficiency, right, by opening up to my internal developers. I can probably get some more revenue and some interesting business models by opening up to my partners. And then here's the wild card of the, of the public APIs. I think this is how, in, in my experience, in our experience at Intel, uh, a large enterprise would look at the API management argument of you know, what should I invest and where should I invest? Should I start here, should I start here, and should I, should I go here? All right, the next section is API surfacing and integration. Th this kind of brings back to where I was going. Uh, an iceberg slide again, right? Uh, the previous uh, uh, speaker had an iceberg slide. Uh, I actually borrowed this from uh, my friends at Mashery. Uh, we're obsessed with iceberg slides and we live in California. I don't know why this is, but... Uh, so th the top is the beautiful iceberg, right? It, I mentioned this before. There's the guy, he's happy, he's, he's making his API and it's self onboarding process. He's got OAuth support, uh, interactive documentation, great community features. Uh, but then you've got the dark ocean of legacy debt and non-functional requirements, and there's a shark. And what this represents are the barriers that an enterprise has to overcome. A large enterprise, if they want to get an API strategy going. And there's two aspects here. One uh, is legacy debt. So what is legacy debt? Uh, one of my colleagues came up with this term. Uh, he works as an architect in Intel IT. And it's... It's very apt. It's existing business processes and technology choices that have made, been made in the history of the, of the company that impede and hamper faster value creation. So it's, um, I'll just give you one example. It's not necessarily related to APIs, but if you've shopped at um, TJ Maxx or TJX, they actually, when you buy like a lamp or whatever, they, they record your credit card number and they basically store it in every system that they have in a house and it's going all over the place. And it's like, well, why did they do that? That seems kind of like not a good idea, right? They could have come up with a better way to, to, to track customer purchasing habits, but they didn't. And they can't just change that. They can't just change the way that that huge retailer does business. It's a business process, a capability built into the way that they do business. So here we have these two assertions. The larger the enterprise, the more debt they have. Legacy debt, technology choices, mainframe, different things. And the larger the enterprise, the more value they have to gain from APIs because they have more, uh, they have more uh, products and more technology that they could, they could expose to other people. So you've got this legacy debt issue that large enterprises have to grapple with. And then the other side of this is the non-functional requirements. And this is scalability, uh, security and control, and integration and mediation. So scalability, when we talk about APIs, um, you know, how many callers can I support? How many millions of devices can I support? How does this API behave in the face of scale, in the face of mobile, right? And this is a little bit different than what we might have had with just the web, where there's more devices than there are browsers. And then the second point is enterprises, you know, Fortune 500 companies, they have security and compliance requirements to worry about. Um, as much as it You'd like to make an argument, hey, just put this in the cloud, or here's an easy way to do this. Just don't, don't use .NET, use Ruby. Or y they can't just make those choices. They, they have existing investments that, that put them down a path where it's difficult to break some of those existing technology choices and, and patterns. And then finally, it's uh, integration and mediation. So taking the existing mainframe systems, middleware systems, and trying to make them API ready or RESTful and doing it in such a way that they can meet the scalability requirements, they can meet the control requirements, and they can meet, um, and they can participate in the API economy. So this is the, the barriers, happy guy up front, beautiful iceberg, sharks, and all the trouble that you'll get uh, as a large enterprise. Startup doesn't have this problem. They have no legacy debt. Startup legacy debt is zero, right? They don't have these problems. So this, uh, this slide sort of um, supports what I just said. You know, ideally, you want APIs across the stack. Uh, they might have made different uh, technology investments, .NET, IBM investments, Oracle investments. They have different package software, different databases. They might have legacy message queues running part of their business. And they might need to handle complex, complex composition. Um, where you have maybe a REST call coming in gets uh, triggers off a whole set of other processes that may involve REST, may involve SOAP, may involve databases, uh, and you want to put it all together. 
So we have this, uh, this quote here. I actually don't know where the quote came from, but uh, by 2017, over two thirds of new integration flows will extend outside the enterprise firewall and 50% of the cost will be integration to surface that stuff. It sounds easy just to say, let's get rid of it and start over, but sometimes it's not possible. So, um, you know, this is, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Intel product, not, this isn't product pitch, but um, there's going to be some product stuff in here uh, because we do have to put food on the table at the end of the day. So one of the things that we do is we reduce the time to an enterprise exposing an API where you don't have to code and you can, and you can actually surface uh, legacy type integrations, whether the REST, SOAP, you know, FTP, mainframes, databases, as a REST API with a visual policy. And you don't need to write code for this, and that's appealing to an enterprise because they don't have to pay developers and get a whole development running to surface an API. Uh, and then along with this, there's the, uh, the portal aspect of it, the community aspect of it. So there's the integration piece, the traffic management piece, and then there's the, uh, the portal piece, getting the uh, API out to a community of developers, evangelizing it in the marketplace. And this is the, the beautiful iceberg part, right? This part hides some of the, um, the tough integration work that has to happen on the inside. This is the part that you see, and these are samples from Mashery uh, Portal. Talk a little bit more about security here. Am I doing on time? 12 minutes, okay. So new developer requirements. Um, this takes the, the existing enterprise authentication mechanisms and asks the question, okay, I've built my whole enterprise around this type of authenticating credential and this type of secret. And now to expose an API, I need to use this type of authenticating credential and this kind of secret. So in this world, we want API keys, we want OAuth, we want shared secrets and maybe username and passwords. In this world, maybe we use username and passwords, but maybe we use a whole lot, bunch of other stuff that probably most of you in this room don't even want to hear about, like Kerberos, like SAML, like one-time passwords. A lot of this stuff is uh, it's a mess in the on the enterprise side. So again, there's a question here: is enterprises can't necessarily afford another identity silo? They need a way to broker to bridge from existing identity access management systems authorization to the world of API management. That's a problem and that's something that our technology set can solve. You can also solve it if you code and write the code yourself, but that has high cost drivers for the enterprise. Other things to consider, right? Um, security. So there's sort of breaking this down to one more level. Um, if you're going to put an API out there in your large enterprise, you have to secure it. You're going to have compliance people. You're going to have a, a security firewall review board. If you want, I can tell you how it is at Intel to expose something on the internet. It is ridiculous. It is difficult. You need to go through layers of people and convince them that you have the, the right security controls. So here we have sort of two categories, uh, threat prevention and trust enablement. If you think about it, we have all these great um, quotes, oh my gosh, all the traffic, more of my traffic is going through the API than, than my web server, right? Well, how, do we, how are we securing the API, right? If this is the way that data is flowing into my enterprise and out of my enterprise, it needs to have security. So denial of service protection, make sure someone doesn't take you down. Interesting code injection attacks can happen, right? It depends on how the backend is set up, uh, but you have to protect yourself against this. Uh, malware detection, antivirus scanning, and then the large enterprises have to make sure that they don't send out an income statement, that somebody didn't put up um, uh, an app server connected to a database that has intellectual property on it. They have to protect themselves. So you need this kind of threat perimeter defense for APIs. And then trust is what I mentioned earlier is authentication and authorization. And then the other thing is enterprises have also invested heavily in authorization systems building fine-grained authorization into applications throughout. How do you broker that into an API and do you need to, these are some of the questions that an enterprise is gonna ask before they can just jump into the API economy. Keep looking up here, I have it right there, I don't know why. 
Okay, so other things. So these are uh, other some uh, some other non-functional requirements here. Uh, you know, I, I put this slide in originally, but it's sort of motherhood and apple pie for API management. Um, I think this kind of goes without saying, and this actually comes, you know, from a portal sort, sort of product of so getting analytics on uh, the APIs themselves. Um, more interesting is service level management. This is a really actually complicated slide, but uh, if you start on the right hand side and you have enterprise services, you got to think about a couple of different layers of throttling, right? You have to think about, well, I need to protect my capacity from the outside world, but then again, I also need to put business plans. And then on top of that, I might need to put some denial of service. So what, what our guy sees here on the left, he just makes a rest call, but there's a lot of stuff happening in the middle here. Um, you have different API business plans for coarse grain business enablement, and their scope is a single API, and they enforce things like messages per day, quota, uh, and enforce per calling application. Then you might have quality of service. This is fine grade infrastructure tuning. This can apply to a set of a single API, a set of APIs or a set of services. This will control things like transaction rate, data rate, latency controls, utilization of the CPU and memory, uh, enforce per API, per service or IP address. This is the type of control that an enterprise would need if they're gonna own and scale uh, API management on premise. And then DOS would be denial of service. So. Uh, keeping some sort of threats out. And then what about scaling across data centers, right? Uh, you need to have that a plan for that as well. Uh, you need to have a plan to scale it from on-premise to the cloud, from cloud to cloud, from your different physical data centers. Enterprises won't be able to jump in unless we ha you have a good story for this or a good way to scale this up. And here, this is just showing some of our capabilities in a cons conceptual diagram. We have some plans in front. There's another uh, wild card that's being thrown in here as well, which is, uh, you know, APIs are successful because they use HTTP, ubiquitous protocol, everybody understands it, it's RESTful, JSON, awesome. The problem is we're getting different protocols are, are coming out now, right? Uh, different variations. WebSockets is probably the most famous one here that we're seeing more and more of. You know, moving to full duplex communication versus just the request response. Uh, here, the enterprise has to think about how they're going to scale a WebSockets architecture for millions of devices when we start to trend away from just HTTP or the plain original HTTP. So this is another, uh, and there's some st statistics here of what we can do. Uh, we could talk more about it if you want some of our performance metrics. Uh, but this is another thing that enterprise will, will consider when they scale an API out. Okay, I'll go through just three use case, conceptual use case deployments that we've seen in the wild uh, to give you an idea. I could talk in more detail about these, but these are, this is a large telco uh, and they wanted to expose APIs and they have multiple data centers, a data center one, data center two. They had internal services and the internal services were mostly uh, SOAP services and some REST services that were RPC. They didn't use nouns, they, they were just RPC REST services. So they did a couple of things. Uh, they put an API manager in front in a cluster, and then they actually had a second security layer uh, where they split up. So this is all HTTP communication, but this telco for them to feel secure had to put multiple layers in their infrastructure before they can scale this properly. So we had some of the threat defense, um, uh, XML, uh, REST and JSON firewalling, and then API management and surfacing at the second tier. That's a large, what a large telco would look like. And it would be even more complicated than would fit on this slide, right? This is just a conceptual deployment. Uh, here's another one. This is uh, one of the uh, uh, use cases that Intel and, and Mastery have deployed together, which is Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. And again, a lot going on here. Um, they are an association of 39 blues and they wanted to have doctor and patient reviews available on mobile phones where all the blues would have the same uh, rating information available. So they are what Gartner would call a, a security integration brokerage, pulling data from uh, websites over REST, from JSON, uh, JSON data and legacy EDI data, mashing it together, scaling it to 
uh, even, not even, we're not even at the rest, uh, fully restful part yet. There's some JSON and REST, but then flat files and SOAP. And then each of the plans would turn around and expose that data as uh, a REST API that you would call from your mobile app. So this is the dark ocean of you know, integration that's happening. And on your mobile phone, you just get the answer. You're like, this is awesome. APIs rule, right? So, but this is what happens on the back end. Here's another uh, one of our customers is Ubisoft. Um, here, we are doing some mediation of APIs uh, directly to some of the console devices. So when you log in as uh, you know, Joe Bob and you want to get your, your player rewards, meaning like you know, the, the sword and the scepter that you, that you won after gaming 80 hours last night, uh, that was actually split up in different backend services. Some were .NET services, some were uh, Node.js services, and putting a layer in front to mediate and pull the different pieces of those responses and requests together and provide a nice RESTful API for these devices where it could scale to the numbers that you're gonna get here. So again, this is sort of a hidden API management use case because API calls coming from a device, but it was still a rest, a rest and JS, uh, a restful call with JSON. And we have, um, I'm gonna be done two minutes early. Uh, we have some resources here um, on our website if you wanna learn more about our product. Uh, and I'm here to talk with uh, my team back there. So I guess I'll go ahead and stop and take questions if you guys have questions. No questions? Objections? Yeah. I have a, I have a question. Uh, well, in Europe, we are very involved in the open data movement. Uh, so big companies and big organizations and government try to go in open data movement, uh, but th they want to keep security on their data. So they, uh, um, they, for the moment, they don't open uh, valuable data until they have security, until they have something. Um, and I often say to them that API are a way to have a kind of access of control or the data you shared, but um, it's, it, um, their main uh, ask is security. Right. Say the first thing that we, uh, before opening an asset is security. So what is your point of view of it? And does, uh, this is main, main what is exactly the thing that y you sell? Do you sell mostly trust when you sell solutions of opening APIs? So, so I'm a product guy, so I'm going to answer your question with, you know, solving your problem with my product. How about that? But I'll give you a conceptual answer as well. I think that, um, so we've encountered the same thing. So we have uh, government agencies who want to expose some of their data to other agencies. Similar problem. And the security there is not just about access control and authentication. It's also about protecting content as it leaves. So that could be encryption. It could be redaction. It could be tokenization of content. So I would say that the security aspects are twofold. You could hire a, a, develop, a security development team, get some guys who used to work at you know security house, and write code in your app server to do all this encryption uh, and uh, authentication. Or you can decouple it into a product, like a gateway that we have, that takes the problem away. It's like putting a security architect in your, your data, in your DMZ. And then you, you can leave the data as is. The gateway can take it, mush it up, and just give the pieces that it needs. And it can redact and strip some of the more important information and enforce the security, where there's transport level security or message level security, at that point of control. So it's all about where you want to put the point of control. Um, but we've seen that problem and that question, and that's how we solve it for our customers, is with a, a gateway kind of approach. Yeah. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Was there one in this corner? Yes, I'm coming. Just wait. <laughs> so everyone can hear the question. It's very important. Raise your hand again. Everyone looks different from the side. <laughs> sure. So I have a question specific to Intel. Okay. You know, uh, the transition to an e API economy is, uh, is difficult. So what was the change management that Intel had to go through to make that happen? And secondly, what's the roadmap looking like th internally? I mean, from an Intel standpoint, is it blessed across the board? Uh, the vision has kind of been uh, 
people can sort of see it from a common vision and everybody's on board and things like that you know would li like to you like you to specifically uh, touch touch I'll, on that. I'll address what I can um, some of that's above my pay grade um, I think at Intel um, the division that I work in where we we sell enabling technology okay and that's blessed at the highest levels I guess if you want to call it that so we will help enterprises solve API management problems whether they have they want an on-premise solution or a cloud solution where they want a, an on-premise portal or they want a cloud portal and that's blessed as far as I understand you know <laughs> blessed as blessed can be um, the first question of Intel going to an API economy I, I can't actually answer that because it's different group so I can't help you there sorry thank you so much Blake uh. Thank you.